The Pink Mohair Blanket. I had an obsession with English House and Garden magazine. I collected so many they formed floor-to-ceiling pillars in our tiny hotel room in Japan. The glossy house porn was the perfect escape from our four walls. We drink tea out of delicate bone china cups and immerse ourselves in the pages, imagining what we'd do one day when we owned our own home. I'm just like my mother. She was a collector of everything. Hundreds of miniature teapots were displayed on bespoke narrow shelves in her kitchen. A locked glass cabinet held her fragile collection of Balik, iconic Irish tableware with the shamrock motif. It reminded mum of her Irish roots. Oh, and magazines. She was worse than me. She had so many that the muffler broke off the bottom of her car when I was taking them to the tip one day. I think my collecting habit formed in my early 20s when I lived above an antique store in Sydney. During that time, I hung out with many antiquarians, including my first husband, John, who, at 17 years older than me, seemed ancient to my 21-year-old self. The manager of the antique store was a woman named Joy. She took a shine to me and would often invite me to her home. It was awe-inspiring. The streets outside blurred as the interior wrapped itself around me like a soft pink mohair blanket. Settling into one of her oversized Chesterfields was an invitation to linger. Looking around the room, my eyes feasted on exquisite little pieces of history, an original Hockney, a real Thomas Chippendale credenza, antique chinoiserie porcelain. She would bring a tray with freshly brewed coffee. This was long before the coffee culture caught on and serve it with pouring, never whipped cream, darling and placed the tray down on a Keelum upholstered ottoman. Even though Joy was mum's age, she was my style guru and confidant. Later, there would be wine and cheese, as more friends, actors, movie directors, painters and writers would turn up. I felt like such a small-town country bumpkin, but Joy made a point of including me. The last time I saw Joy was in the mortuary of a funeral home, She was lying on a stainless steel table, still wearing the hospital gown. No mohair blankets. I took a linen nightdress and a favourite pair of loafers to dress her in, but the funeral home attendants explained that it would be hard for me to do on my own. They said she'd be as fragile as crepe paper. I stood by while they took care of her, treating her as respectfully as if she was still alive. Afterwards, I sang to her, Alone in the bleak surroundings, my thoughts flowed out in melody. I pictured where she had lived out her last years. Don't try to furnish a house in one day, darling, she'd say. Let the pieces find you. After seven years in Japan, we freighted all our treasures home. The English magazines, of course. A grand piano. Intricately woven wedding kimonos. Woodblock prints indigo dye fabrics, and endless tea sets, wedding gifts, all carefully packed in bubble wrap. Ironically, in Japan, wedding china has only five pieces. That's so the couple won't split up because they can't share the settings equally. You left behind all the beautiful things you bought to feed your ghost I'm surrounded by worthless pretty things They ain't
Won't be 